Hello learners of the postgraduate diploma in environmental and occupational health. Welcome to this session. I introduce myself as Dr. Sushmita Vaskar, working in the discipline of environmental studies in the School of Interdisciplinary and Transdisciplinary Studies, Indira Gandhi National Open University. In this session, we will discuss about the occupational health hazards faced by women workers, for example, in different industries, in different factories, what are the occupational hazards and the health threats that are faced by the women working in these companies. Now, this forms a part of the course MEV005, that is Occupational Health and Safety, that is the name of the course. Now, in the earlier sessions, we have discussed on the occupational health of workers and that uh, normally constitutes the general population of the workers. Now, here we are going to specifically focus on the women workers and uh, they are vulnerable uh, and the risk factor is also high due to the vulnerabilities with respect to their gender, the age, the migrant status, the nature of the job that they are employed in and so on. Now, however, when we talk about the general population, there may be certain risks that they are facing, but there are certain groups, we refer to them as vulnerable group. They are disadvantages due to the following factors, due to many factors, in fact. They need certain special measures in order to safeguard their health and safety. So here, we will focus on the occupational health and safety of women and how they are vulnerable to work. Now, you would have seen that women normally get stressed as compared to their male counterparts and in the same way they have to multitask several activities maybe their household activities at the domestic front in the office and they are juggling between their home their children and also at their work so they tend to get more stressed and that is why we are focusing on the specific hazards that are faced by the women workers so we will also discuss how the occupational hazards for example are they mechanical are they physical are they affecting the reproductive system and so on and some ways in order to protect these special group of workers after listening to this lecture you will be able to describe the occupational health of women explain the occupational hazards and risk of the women workers discuss some legal provisions for the women now, when we talk about the hazard and risk among the women workers, let us discuss about women and work initially. Now, customarily in most of the societies globally all over the world, men and the women, they have been involved in performing different types of works. Now, in a, any organization, in any office, you have seen that there are also male workers, there are also the female workers. So, they have been involved in doing or performing several type of work. For example, they may be doctors, they may be nurses, they may be engineers, they may be advocates and also solicitors. So, there are different type of professions where the women are involved employed in. Women have been doing the household work also, for example, cooking, cleaning, washing the vessels or their clothes and also taking care of the children. So that is why I said that they need special certain provisions which need the protection of their health and also certain uh, kind of the benefits. It may be leave and certain other factors which are uh, more important for the women workers because they are balancing their family, their children and also their work. So along with this, we have also seen that the women are involved in working in the field that is in the agricultural sector. They are taking care of the animals and also fishing in the fishing communities. So several studies have been done among the women and girls in the developing countries, for example, in India, in order to quantify their work. So these studies or the several studies that the research has been focusing on that has explained that the on an average the women workers they in the rural areas they spend approximately three to five hours per week more than the male on the activities such as carrying water or wood uh, especially they carry it on their head. So it also gives a stress on their um, you know the uh, musculoskeletal system. They also work in the field, they do sowing, then reaping, then dehusking, then grinding the grains. So these are all the activities that are performed by women in the agriculture sector. Then they also spend an additional 20 to 30 hours per week more than the men on the housework such as cooking, cleaning or washing which we already discussed before and they don't receive any monetary payment for such kind of activity. 
So over the past few decades, we have seen that there has been a change in the situation. The proportion of women who are working in the formal as well as in the informal sector as the paid workers, that has remarkably increased. In the developing countries, for example, we have seen that women make up just 31% of the labor force, much less than in the industrialized countries. But we find that their participation is also increasing. According to the International Labor Organization, the ILO, women make up nearly 70% of the world's poor and 65% of the world's illiterate. So that is the state of affairs. But the kind of work that women do from country to country that often varies. In the developed countries, majority of the women work as skilled workers, clerks or even the semi-professional nature of their job. But in the developing countries, they are normally working as unskilled workers or even as the semi-skilled workers. So thereby they are also at threat. For example, if you are not mastering uh, how to operate a machinery, for example, in the mechanical uh, work where you have to operate a machine, then in that case, skill is very much required. If you don't know properly, if you just know how to start the machine and then if you don't know properly the working guidelines, then they may be at a higher risk. So being employed outside the home, definitely by getting paid for the work, that is definitely empowering the women and it is giving them more autonomy, but it also increases the risk related to their health and security. Biological variations are also posing the different risks and the problems which are associated with work in women and also in the men. So women also do the house chores in addition to the work and this contributes to various mental, physical and also the social problems which are actually just unique to women. So reproductive problems during work, during pregnancy, they are also issues that are related specifically to the working women. And sometimes if you see the position or the hierarchy, women work at the lower rank when compared to the male counterpart. So it has been observed that the title of the men and the women may be similar. This happens in some places, but the task performed may not be the same. So that will also cause a kind of a job stress in the women workers. Women are also likely to face discrimination and harassment at work more often than men, especially if they are employed in occupations that have less women workers. Now let us see the specifically some of the occupational health hazard and the risk that are faced by the women. So you have learned about the hazards that are faced by the workers in different industries and it may be due to the physical, the chemical and the biological agents that are found at the workplace. However, we also need to keep the following factors in mind when we are dealing with the women workers. The stature of the women, if you see many of the developing countries or if you see India, the height of an average woman would be between 5 and 5.3. But in, a, in other countries, you know, you may find that the height of the women is much more. So the stature of the women is on an average smaller and the physical strength is also lesser as compared to the male counterparts. Their physiological function and the measurements such as their vital capacity and the hemoglobin, these are also significantly lesser when compared to the men. So the equipment and the space at work, they are also designed to suit the men. So when they are smaller or when their height is shorter, when uh, compared to the men, then it makes it difficult for them in order to handle these instruments. So the wrong posture by, you know, either they may be leaning forward or they may be trying to, you know, reach for the heights, that uh, wrong posture and working on these equipments, that can lead to the physical fatigue and also stress among the women workers. Now, one more point to be noted is the skin area of women that is larger as compared to the circulating volume as compared to men and they have larger body fat content which may result in the lower work capacity. A woman's reproductive function, you know, that is something which is very important and the work related during pregnancy that can also give rise to several risks to the fetus in utero related to the hazards at the workplace. So that makes the women more vulnerable to certain hazards when compared to men. Women belonging to the lower socio-economic status, they are also more vulnerable as they have certain nutritional problems. They may be malnutrition or anemia and they may be living in the poor environmental condition which has overcrowding, which has environmental pollution and uh, it may be having unsafe water supply that is contaminated water and indoor air pollution and all these factors uh, will uh, also result sometimes in sexual harassment. Some of the common occupational health problems which are faced by the workers in industries, they are as follows. 
they include first and primarily their musculoskeletal disorders. So most common health problem which is encountered in women is a musculoskeletal disorder and that may be due to the double burden as I said working at home and also balancing your work in the office and uh, the most of the women's work that will include the repetitive work for example plucking the tea leaves in the tea garden so they may be in the crouched positions or they may be um, bending forward and doing that the whole day maybe for five hours or even six hours at a stretch so this repetitive movement that can be seen and also prolonged standing in the factories or in the service sector all this can make them susceptible to the back pain or even other musculoskeletal problems now some parts of the musculoskeletal system which are affected in the women normally are the lower back pain they get then they complain of the shoulder the hand and the knee pain that is all due to the awkward posture and excessive repetitive movements to be done for a prolonged period of time so in this figure if you see the woman is actually polishing a surface of a wooden piece that is in the manufacturing in the furniture industry so you are seeing that she is concentrating on that work at the same time her posture is fixed and this may be going on for a couple of hours together that way she may be getting certain vibrational you know the mechanical vibration due to the instrument she may have complained the shoulder pain or the hand pain and also certain back pain related problems in mechanical jobs most of the tools the equipment and the workstation they have been designed for the average male height and they are not suited at from the women's angle from the ergonomic point of angle so this leads to increased strain on the neck and this can also lead to several other health problems now the fetus is also vulnerable to several environmental and occupational factors that the mother is exposed to you would have often seen that the, when the mother keeps singing you know during her pregnancy you see that the child also automatically develops an interest in music at least in some of the cases you can see this so it depends on the type of the environment that the mother is exposed to if she is very happy during the entire gestational period then you will see that the child born also definitely has a different effect it is less stressed it is born in a happy environment and the child is more happy and you know um, able to uh, balance the work and the life more effectively so stress definitely has an effect on the women health and on the women's reproductive function effect on the reproductive function you will see that when they are lifting severe and heavy machinery you know whether it is in the construction industry or certain other manufacturing sectors that will definitely interfere this kind of heavy physical activity will interfere with the normal menstrual cycle in the women workers this can present as dysmenorrhea, amenorrhea, and ovulatory cycles and also a reduction in the fertility patterns. In the agricultural workers also, the women in India, for example, they are the major task force. You will see a lot of women working in this field. And they are exposed to several problems, for example, the zoonotic diseases, ticks, bites from the insects, viral load, the toxic hazards from chemicals, pesticides, fertilizers, all these which are being applied in the agricultural field. And in addition, they are also exposed to several physical hazards because they are working in extreme weather condition. And they also are exposed to respiratory hazards like the exposure to the dust, to the grain and also different fibers. So this is just one part when they are exposed to pesticides, majority of the workers they are employed as laborers in the field and the heavy doses of these chemicals definitely in the uh, tilling of the land and picking of the crop then that will affect their reproductive health. Direct contact with these harmful chemicals, the toxic agents that can expose the women and it is a serious threat to the fetus which is actually forming in utero. The industries which are processing coir, jute, the cashew nut and also that which is involving in processing processing cotton, tea and rubber, they as well as the textile industry, they are all exposing the workers in, or the women workers to toxic chemicals and also to the physical stress. Respiratory problem. So we also discussed that the you know cotton or the uh, dust from the uh, sugarcane dust or the cotton industry they can all affect their respiratory health in the same way where the biomass fuels are used in India. So there again the women will be exposed to indoor air pollution they are using that as a source for their cooking 
and sometimes the level of these pollutants will be much higher than the permissible limit or the acceptable limits. So that will again make them susceptible to acute and also chronic respiratory diseases, cancer and adverse pregnancy outcomes. So some of the case studies which have involved is the women who are involved in the ginning of the cotton. So we have seen that large amount of the cotton dust is being inhaled by the women and then they uh, that will lead to the deranged pulmonary function in them. So bisonosis is one of the problems and the acute and the chronic damage to the lungs has been seen by the scientists when they have observed these women workers. Also the age of the women, the duration and the time of exposure, time period, how much they were exposed to these dust, that also forms a major factor. Some of the problems uh, include the sprain, the strains, carpal tunnel syndrome, tendonitis, other musculoskeletal disorders. All these are accounting for more than 52% of the injuries and the illnesses that are encountered by the female workers when compared to only 45% by the male workers. Therefore, the solution can be periodic rest or the breaks that can be taken throughout the shift and that can reduce these musculoskeletal discomfort and it will allow the workers for a better job performance. Job stress so we have always seen that you know when we have a meeting to attend or today we have a lot of work pressure so we have seen that we are at stress so that is also called as occupational stress or the job stress. This is a growing problem for all of the workers. 60% of the employed women, they normally complain of job stress, of headache, of fatigue, of tiredness or sometimes even chest pain. So this is all due to some problems that they are facing at work. What could these problems be? It could be due to harassment by some of the superiors or you know certain uh, other problems which are they are encountering or facing with their co-workers and with their supervisors, maybe poor relationship with their supervisors and repetitive and monotonous work which they are not enjoying on a day-to-day -day basis. So job stress has always been linked to cardiovascular diseases, to heart stroke, to heart failure, depression and also complete burnout. Skin allergies and diseases. Studies from different countries, they have shown that the women who are employed in the beauty parlors and the brick kiln fields and also in fisheries and orchards, they are susceptible to the skin allergies and disease because they are working with the toxic chemicals and the agents. Accidents and injuries. Data from a study among the Indian women, they were aged between 18 and 39 years and they were hospitalized with the fractures. When the study were made, they saw that it was all related to the work related accidents and young girls and women, they were carrying heavy loads and they are working at the construction sites and under the unsafe conditions, they contribute to a high occurrence of accident and also injuries. Nutritional deficiency, it could be due to macro nutrient, micronutrient due to vitamin and the mineral deficiency. All this can also increase the risk of the women, fractures in the women that are specially seen in the older women. Now let us focus in our final uh, session on the final part of our lecture on the reproductive health hazards alone. So three quarters of the women who are employed in the different uh, organizations, they are of the reproductive age. Ionizing radiation for example, that can damage your germ cells. So women carry the germ cells right from their birth and these germ cells are more susceptible to the toxic, the chemical agents than the other body cells or the somatic cells. So the female hormones are also susceptible to external factors that can affect the woman as well as affect their fertility and also the fetus. Workplace exposures to the hazardous substances. Several thousand cases of breast cancers and also cervical cancer. This is being reported recently. Can you think the reason behind this? Why is this so? So maybe there are certain hazardous substances that are being used or that they are exposed to on an everyday daily basis and that is resulting in the development of these types of cancers. Ethylene oxide for example that is used in to sterilize the medical supplies. More than 1 lakh women are exposed to ETO in their workplace especially in the hospital and in the healthcare sectors. PCBs the polychlorinated biphenyl compounds they were produced commercially for the use in the electrical industry until the year 1977. Then it was banned and the products with this PCBs, since it is a persistent a compound, it still remains in the workplace and in the environment. The potential link between the PCB exposure and breast cancer has been reported. 
in the same way per chloroethylene. This is a main solvent that is used in the dry cleaning industry. So the women who are exposed to this perchlorine ethylene, they have developed cervical cancer. And let me tell you, in some of the countries, 62% of the workforce working only in the dry cleaning agency are the women workers. Chemical agents that are present in the environment of the workplace that can also affect the normal functioning of the ovaries. Women working in the pharmaceutical industries, there again they experience the problems with menstruation. This is attributed to the exposure of the hormones to certain alkylating agents. Now let me give you a case study. This is due to a factory incident which occurred due to radium poisoning. And this was popularly known as the radium girls that were poisoned by the factory incident. Now radium was actually used as a radium paint, a luminous radium paint and that is used to uh, the flurries and you know paint the watch dials. And you see in this figure that in that in some of the factories, it was only the women who are employed in this entire sector in the entire factory. So they were painting the dial and here they were also asked to point brushes to their lips or to their cheeks so that you know they could avoid that touching any cloth or any fiber for more effective the radium that could be painted on these watch dials. The women did so. And finally, this radium got deposited on their teeth, on their cheeks, on their uh, bones and so on, on their hair. So these incidents, they occurred at three different factories. One in Orange in New Jersey, somewhere it was around 1917. And uh, one in Ottawa in Illinois, beginning in the early 1920s. And the third facility was in Waterbury in Connecticut. That was in the 1920s. It was not until 1925 when Harrison Martland discovered that the radium had deposited in the women's bones and several of the women working in the factory had a level, several problems. Now the first radiation sickness that was reported by the women working here was dental pain, loss of teeth, lesions and ulcers and failure of the tooth extractions in order to heal. That were some of the conditions. The anemia, the bone fracture and necrosis of the jaw. That was also a condition which is now presently known as a radium jaw. The suppression of menstruation and also sterility. That also occurred. So the radium girl saga, this holds a very important place in the history of both occupational health and also in the labor rights movement. The right of individual workers to sue for damages from the corporation due to labor abuse was established as a result of this radium girl's abuse and this case. In the wake of the case, industrial safety standards were demonstrably enhanced for many of the decades. Now let us discuss about the healthcare workers. Several million nurses and the nursing aides are basically female workers. So you have seen in the hospitals when you go, you know the nurse that attends to you who uh, administers the syringes, who administers the medicines for you, who uh, changes the diapers for the elderly ones, you know, for your loved ones. All that you will see that the women workforce are male in the hospital and they make you feel more comfortable. So in the nursing profession itself, you find that many of the women are employed in such professions. So the healthcare workers, they face other hazards even other than facing, you know, the chemical toxicity. They also face other hazards such as which includes the latex allergy and also the needle stick injuries. So needle stick injuries, more than 6 lakh to 8 lakh of the needle stick injuries occur annually in the healthcare settings and they mainly involve the nurses. These injuries pose more of the physical and the emotional threat to these workers and they are also arising into the serious health bone infections, specifically the blood bone infections, for example, the human immunodeficiency virus HIV and the, also the hepatitis C and the B viruses. All these are also occurring due to these needle stick injuries and the transmission of these blood bone pathogens into their blood. Latex allergy. You find that, you know, many of the, uh, many what? Most of them, you know, they have to wear the personal protective equipments and they also wear the gloves for safeguarding their health. Now, these gloves, do you know what they are made of? There are, of course, different uh, components, different types of the gloves that you get in the market. But the latex allergy and the latex rubber that is being used, many of the healthcare workers and also doctors have reported that there are certain allergic components that create problems with their skin, causing skin allergies. And that is due to using the excessively the latex gloves for extended period of time. 
in the corona pandemic you have seen several of the doctors several of the health professionals they were wearing the personal protective care equipments and the gloves for extended period of time for you know 9 hours or 12 hours and you would have seen that you know they had rashes of several kind having problems in their skin so among the healthcare workers they developed frequent latent exposure 8 to 12% developed sensitivity to latex and that leads to allergy like the skin rashes hives the nasal eye and the sinus symptoms asthma and also shock now finally let us come to certain legal provisions the government of india has enacted laws and other measures in order to safeguard the interest of the workers belonging to the vulnerable groups some of the important protective provisions that are safeguarding the interest of the women include section 22 of the factories act in 1948 that provides that no women shall be allowed to clean lubricate or adjust any part of a prime mover or any transmission machinery while the prime mover or the transmission machinery is in motion or to clean lubricate or adjust any part of any machine if the cleaning lubrication or the adjustment thereof would expose the woman to risk of injury from any moving part either of that machine or any adjacent machinery in the same way we have section 27 of the factories act of 1948 that prohibits the employment of women in any part of a factory for pressing cotton in which a cotton opener is at work prohibition of night work which forms a part of section 661b of the factories act of 1948 that no women shall be allowed to work in any factory between except between the hours of 6 am and 7 pm section 25 of the bd and cigars workers act 1966 that stipulates that no women shall be allowed to work in any industrial premise except between 6 am and 7 pm section 461b of the mines act of 1952 prohibits the employment of women in any mine above the ground except below the hours of 6 am and 7 pm prohibition of subterranean work section 461b of the mines act of 1952 prohibits the employment of women in any part of a mine which is below the ground also finally we have the maternal benefit act of 1961 that regulates the employment of women in certain establishments for certain periods before and after childbirth and provides maternity benefit or leave and so on the building and other construction act 1996 provides for the maternity benefit to female beneficiaries of the welfare fund finally we have to see that in this figure now if you see you know the boss or the coworker or the co supervisor he has always has to counsel the women worker and the safety at the workplace for the women is highly essential so they need to counsel all the workers and the employees at least on a weekly basis or at least once in 15 days there have to be trainings that have to be conducted counseling sessions that have to be conducted and ask the employees are you facing any problem are you facing any risk of any kind is there any sexual harassment that is being faced by the women workers in their workplace finally we find that the women health is very important as work is definitely empowering women and uh, women since they are balancing several activities in the domestic and also personal and also at their office front women are multitasking and doing several work for the benefit of uh, mankind humanity and to the society so thereby the women safety forms a very important part and my dear learners i hope you have had a good understanding of this topic today that is the occupational health hazards that are faced by the women workers in several industries thank you for your patient listening